Best Long-Term Play of the Week is the one book that everyone's talked about, except for us so far during this show. We're going to talk about it right now. We're talking about Batman number 89. This one had a lot of buzz for a character, but all I saw was doing some bird watching or something, binoculars. But there's another character in here as well, and I'm sure Jack's going to talk about it here in a minute. But Jack, tell us why this is your long-term play of the week. I'm going to first say that I almost cringe putting this book in this position because I kind of pride myself as using the long-term play spot to give you kind of an alternative view, um, an alternative view of a book that maybe you're not looking at in the, in the, you're looking at in the short term, the long term. This is a tough week. Um, if you, yeah, really, no one, no one miss overlooked this book this week. <laughs> <clears throat> no one overlooked this book, but there isn't also another book where I sit and I go, you know, down the line, this really could matriculate into something. There's some variant covers that I feel, you know, are nice, but I mean, sometimes you have to just crown the king. And this is a book where it, it showed up in the first appearance section. It showed up in the reader buzz section. Um, it showed up in the uh, in the first in the variant buzz section. That's the trifecta, the bolo list trifecta. You don't see that every day. Um, and when you do, you know, and when you're in a situation like this, you got to kind of give it credit. I have mixed emotions about this. I almost don't know what angle to take as we kind of delve into this. Um, I feel like first off, I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know, right? This punchline character has been one of the most discussed about um, topics in the comics. And I also know people who know me know that I tend to take a stance on this first appearance uh, stuff. So first off, I'm a firm believer in a first is a first, right? Having said that, I don't think simply a panel of your eyes is truly a full appearance. So I do think that this is a, what some would call cameo of punchline. Um, I think it does have an actual true first in it though. But yeah. I think that a lot of people are missing the boat and that that's a great point, Brian. Um, we knew, so when we knew or when we got started getting information from DC about what they were going to be going on again, after FOC, which I think was a big mistake on DC's part, um, which is why we see the spike in price that we've seen because of the supply and demand great for speculators. And I know you guys are like, that's why we say don't talk pre FOC, but DC I'm sure wishes the orders would have been, a lot higher for this issue. Um, but this, this is an issue. We knew that we were not only going to be getting punchline soon and punchline <coughs> and punchline is a character who seems to have everything you want, right? We know about what female lead characters can do. Um, we know Joker and what a Joker female henchwoman can do with what Harley Quinn has. But Brian, you and I talk about this. This is a dangerous comparable. We talk about comparables a lot, right? We see it in every aspect of, of, of kind of media. Whether if we're talking about sports, right? You and I are football fans. We're, go, we're coming up on the NFL draft. We're going to see a bunch of young men who are going to get compared to other guys who have done it. And that's always so dangerous. And it, I very much want to caution everyone who thinks this might be the next Harley Quinn. It's my long term play because. I look at this and I go, this could be a character that's huge in the Batman mythos long-term. I see this as a, a more permanent long-term kind of like sidekick for Joker. I think it could be an excellent nemesis for, um, for Harley Quinn. All of those reasons, punchline was obvious. But within that, we also got news of another character coming down the pike, the designer. Looks super cool, right? Costume looked cool. Uh, almost gave kind of a vigil from Daredevil vibe and a little bit of uh, Azrael mixed in there. A little and bit of Red Hood. Yeah, you kind of you kind of looked at this character, this looked dope, but I, I feel like everybody's attention went to Punchline. And we felt like, I think there was some information that we were going to get the designer in like issue 94, where that issue where we've seen the art germ uh, cover with Punchline on it. And then when we started to get spoilers around Monday for this issue, we started to see that designer was in this issue and not only in this issue, in this issue more prominently than punchline. Um, I, I don't think this is going to be a first appearance for punchline. I, I don't think this, this issue is going to be able to hold strong for that. I think hell arisen number three essentially became a more valuable book. Like if you bought more stock in hell horizon three than you did in, in Batman 89, you may have paid off with that. 
<clears throat> as it really seems like that's going to be the 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 punchline uh, first appearance. But I think that you cannot possibly sleep on this new character, the designer. Again, all of this is is really, and I hate to use this word, Brian, because I know this is like a trigger word for a lot of people in comics, but it's all speculation. We don't know what James Tinian is going to do with either of these characters. We don't know whether these are long term, short term. Uh, whether this is going to be another Gotham girl. Uh, we've talked about, what is it, uh, Mr. Bloom. Uh, we've talked about these characters who we've previously gotten excited for that didn't pan out. We just don't know. So when I talk about this book from a long-term uh, play standpoint, what I mean is if you're able to get this book for cover price, this is really looking at it from a cover price perspective. I'm not advocating to anybody that you go spend the $30 that it will cost you to buy um, cover A on the open market. Which will right probably now. drop by this weekend. <clears throat> probably, but I'm even impressed that it maintained through today. I'm, I'm really impressed by that. We did see the cover A and cover B combo drop from about 60 to 45. But I'm really, honestly, I'm impressed that this book is holding out above 20 with what I know the supply of Batman to be. Now, the thing I will caution is all of those Midtown orders haven't arrived yet. Um, all of those uh, um, TFAW orders haven't arrived my yet. Shop. My comic shop orders haven't arrived yet. DCBS orders haven't arrived yet. All of this hasn't arrived, and a lot of flippers are going to put books up, and it is going to eventually water down these prices. But I look at this purely from a cover. If, if you look at it from a cover price pickup, Batman book looks like two Batman villains just giving it the eye test. Are they cool? Do they seem interesting? Um, yeah. So how can you not look at this book and see potential? Having said that, I blame nobody who cashes out for 30 bucks right now. I blame nobody who sells sets for 45 bucks because you only hope you can do 10 times return on investment in a typical comic book flip. To be able to do that the day of release is just unheard of. I'm also pleasantly kind of surprised that we didn't hear a lot of horror stories. At least I didn't today. Let us know if you ran into any, um, any tricanery at the LCS uh, with the pricing of this book. I didn't hear a lot of it. It seemed like stores are getting more and more prepared to deal with these kinds of things. Yeah, there was some stuff in our Patreon Discord, not horror stories, but just like actually comic book stores taking care of the people that have this pull boxes or their regular customers. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, that's the way to do it. We talked about this long money over short money. I'd rather have somebody pay me consistent money on a weekly basis for their weekly pulls than I would make 10 extra bucks off you this week. And then next week, you're not a customer anymore. Um, so these are actually opportunities for LCS is to really win over customers. Um, so I hope this was a boom for LCS I hope they enjoyed this like, you know, big excitement. It's great to have books on the shelf, Brian. If nothing else, you said a reason for people to come to the LCS, a book on the shelf that draws people to the LCS. And I know that some people feel some sort of way when the flippers come in there, but you know what? It's just oh, Vince McMahon style. <laughs> right. You know, and I, you know, the flip, you, you guys know the flippers, right? If you're an every Wednesday LCS guy, you know, that guy that's only coming in when there's a book out like this, right? You know that guy. He doesn't come in every Wednesday. Um, he's here every other month when there's a Batman 89 or he's he's got his key collector app out when he comes in. He's got his bolo list up like a jerk. And he's and he's he's using that to, to pick books out. Um, you know, you know that guy. Um, but and I know sometimes people get salty about that guy, but again, um, this is the kind of excitement that can drive the hobby and hopefully <laughs> Hopefully, it just encourages DC Comics to see this to fruition. Hopefully, they see the demand that the market has for these characters and don't screw the pooch because they have something here. And even if they were planning something short, they can go along with this and, uh, and really have something behind them. It'll, I'm really interested to see what these second prints end up being um, that just passed FOC. Will DC come back with the the color change covers? I've heard both. I've heard that 
no one knows what the covers are going to be yet. And I've heard that they are just going to do a color change. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. I don't have a lot of faith, um, but this is an opportunity for DC Comics, who's been getting, at least publicly, seems like they've been getting beat by Marvel for a while. And now they've got the attention of the market full force. And Batman has the ability to do that. Yeah. So I'm going to take everything that you just said about all the, the news and stuff from the week. I'm going to move that to the side for a minute. I'm going to talk about all that put aside. This is a great freaking issue. I enjoyed this issue. I'm, I liked Tom King's run, but it was more of, I'll say, I don't want to say slow burn, but James Tenian's runs, what are we, four or five issues in? I mean, it's shot out of a cannon right now, and this one is just full action-packed. You're seeing Harley and Catwoman taking out dudes, and you're seeing Batman going full detective. Uh, I enjoyed this issue minus, you know, yeah, we have the punchline stuff. Yes, you have the designer stuff, and I think that's great, and I think that's important, but from a reader buzz standpoint, this has been a great issue. And I'm glad to be collecting this run. I always buy three issues of Batman. I, one for myself, one for each of my kids. And I'm glad this is in the run because it's been a great story. Yeah, definitely. And this is a book that has, honestly, whether we're talking Tom King's run or Tinian's run, it really hasn't mattered. When you're as popular as, as Batman is, it kind of consistently hovers around that reader buzz area. But I agree with you. And it's not really surprising because if you read James Tinney, you talked about Something's Killing the Children, another book where as soon as the book started, right, you were hit in the face. That's kind of his style. He kind of comes out swinging. Um, pew, 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 pew. And you also got to gotta look at it and to kind of compare it. Again, we used a sports reference earlier, the same kind of aspect of if you're taking over from a team that – or for a, a team that is believed to be – publicly at least it lost right the belief is well tom king's run was a failure he's coming in and he's using all his guns right after right off the bat um you know he's coming in and it's it's we're not holding back because we're the underdog here so i'm um, yeah i'm coming with joker i'm coming with harley um you know I'm, I'm bringing all of these tools at my disposal here's some new characters um and i i don't blame james uh tinian for coming out guns of blazing because you know you get kind of one shot you know, at this one opportunity to. If you had one shot, one opportunity to be at this like a level um, that he's at by writing Batman, he does this well. He'll be able to write his ticket in comics. What do you want to write? You'll be able to write whatever you want. Like Scott Snyder did. Exactly. 